Only 10% of who we are is visible to those around. We are very good at surface level emotional connection. And yet, how can we truly love others and be in deep relationship with others if everything is surface level? Some of us are only aware ourselves of the 10% above the iceberg. We haven't done the deep work of finding out who we really are. There is this myth in the church world at times that I want to debunk, is that our emotions are off limits if we are Christians and followers of Jesus. And this was taught all throughout church history. The church begins on the day of Pentecost. It's a group of Jewish followers of Jesus that gather together, but it's during the day of Pentecost, this festival where people from all different parts of the earth are gathered together, the Spirit of God rests on them, 3,000 people are added to the church, and the church kind of explodes, but now it's this conglomerate of people from all different parts of the world. And church leaders in the early church had to protect the church from certain false beliefs that crept in because people would mix Christianity with some of the experiences that they've had or some other religions that they came from. And one of the beliefs that church leaders, especially in the first and second century, had to combat was this movement that crept into the church called Gnosticism. And here is what Gnostics essentially believe. They believe that the only thing that truly matters is the spiritual side of who we are. That matter or our physical body or emotions are actually obstacles to our spirituality. It might sound familiar to a church or culture that you grew up in. I grew up in a Pentecostal context which emphasized the spiritual side but diminished who we are as embodied people. And so these church leaders came together and they formed this council and they said and they declared that Gnosticism was a heresy. That our physical side and our emotional side are not obstacles to true spirituality. And here's why they declared Gnosticism to be heresy. Because Gnostics denied the humanity of Jesus. And Gnostics said that when Jesus was in the garden and he was feeling anguish, now he wasn't fully feeling that as a human being. He was just showing us the idea of what it means to be human. And this was heresy because Jesus becoming human was essential to the gospel, that Jesus would take our punishment, feel it upon himself so that we would be righteous. Not only that, they, the early church leaders understood that God created us to be embodied people with senses and emotions, senses like smell and touch and the ability to see and hear. God doesn't reject those parts of us. He created it, and the broken parts of those things, he will redeem it one day. And so when we look at Scripture, what we find is that God himself showed emotions. Here are a list of emotions that we see God expressing in the Old Testament. God expressed grief in Genesis, jealousy in 1 Kings, anger in the book of Numbers, disappointment in Isaiah, compassion in Isaiah, pleasure, hurt, gladness, satisfaction, pity. These are just a few examples of God himself expressing emotion in the Old Testament. Not only that, the Bible is full of leaders and people who expressed emotions. Think about the man Job who lost everything. He faced pain so deep in his life that he said, I would rather face death than live this life. Talk about an emotional person. Jeremiah, the Bible says, was a man full of sorrow. Jeremiah says, I wish my mom never had me. I wish I was never born. Talk about a person that's emotional. There's an entire book in the Bible called the Book of Lamentations where we express grief or sorrow or pain. Jesus would also show emotions. He showed up at a gravesite for his friend Lazarus and Jesus what? He weeps. He weeps. Jesus at times was angry with his disciples. Jesus was furious at the temple leaders who made the temple a commercial place. Jesus was astonished at times. He showed compassion over and over. So we see all throughout Scripture, both in the Old Testament, through people that are used by God in the life of Jesus, that emotions are okay to be expressed. Yet we, in our culture, in our churches, in our families, have di divorced the emotional side of us and in doing so have denied who God created us to be and denied others what we are truly feeling or experiencing. Because what we tend to do is we only reveal these certain parts of who we are to other people. My wife, she called me out on this many years ago. She calls me out a lot. She called me out on this. She said, I don't know if you know this, but there's a side of you that only me and our kids know. Nobody else in your life knows it. And I said, yeah, I know. I don't want them to know that side. She said, I think that's an area that you got to step into. 
And why? Because I grew up my whole life stifling a part of who I was. So for many of us, we're like an iceberg, and this iceberg image is the theme image for the Emotionally Healthy Spirituality series. Um, we'll be offering this as a course in the spring of next year. If you're interested, I'd encourage you to sign up for that. Sign-ups begin in December. The iceberg is interesting because only 10% of an iceberg is visible above the surface. And this is how many of us live our lives. Only 10% of who we are is visible to those around us. And so what ends up happening, how this affects our relationships, is we are very good at surface level emotional connection. And yet, how can we truly love others and be in deep relationship with others if everything is surface level? And to make matters, ver- uh, to make matters worse for some of us, uh, some of us are only aware ourselves of the 10% above the iceberg. We haven't done the deep work of finding out who we really are. But we forget that what's beneath the surface can dominate what's visible. This is what happened with the Titanic. It wasn't the small 10% that did the damage, it was the entirety of what it was. What's beneath us often has the capacity to dominate what others see around us, the 10% of who we are. So you react in anger or you're irritated at everything and everyone, but you've never paused to ask, I wonder what's going on beneath the surface. I wonder what's going on inside of me that's affecting who I am on the outside. Or you keep making the same bad choices over and over and over and over and over, but you never look beneath the surface to say, why do I look back at my life and it's just a series of bad decisions? Like what is going on inside of me? What is happening beneath the surface? Or you avoid relational conflict. You can't be honest or truthful. You have to beat around the bush because you've never truly learned what it means to speak the truth in love. And you're afraid of how someone would react you actually told them the truth. For many of us, we bury the real, authentic, true parts of who we are beneath the surface. For some, this has a physical impact. Burying stress and emotions can affect your body, your mental health. There's this great story. Uh, Ken Burns, he did a documentary on uh, President Roosevelt. And it's a seven part documentary and he goes through his life. And FDR, he did a lot of great things for our nation. He was known as a president that led us through the war and GI Bill and Social Security and all those things. But in the documentary, Ken Burns shows that FDR was not a very integrated person or an emotionally aware person. Who he was on the outside was not who he was on the inside. FDR, one of his rules was he never showed pain, but he had plenty of it on the inside. He had polio. Many never knew about that. He wore braces all the time. There was one instance, Ken Burns highlights, where an aide caught him grimacing as he's putting on his brace, and as soon as he sees her walk in, he changes his expression to show that there is no pain on the inside. FDR had a lot of things going on. He had an affair with his secretary. And these patterns repeated. There were 19 divorces between five of his children. And Eleanor Roosevelt, when they asked her about his children, their children. She said this raw, honest thing and trigger warning. She said, all I want to do is take my own life. FDR would end up dying at 62 years of age from cerebral hemorrhage. I wonder if there were some things going on on the inside that he kept in to the point that it affected his relationships, it affected himself, it affected his body, it affected his life. I wonder what would happen if he knew and explored and excavated what was beneath the surface of his life. And I wonder where we get this idea that acknowledging and expressing authentic and raw emotions is somehow less spiritual or somehow weak. And the place for us to begin this journey of emotional healing and to be able to offer our full selves to others and to God is to begin to ask ourselves, I wonder why. I wonder what is going on beneath the surface. So here's some questions that you can ask yourself. Maybe you're always stressed out because you're in a rush everywhere you get to. Maybe the question you ask yourself is, why am I always in a hurry? What is going on beneath that makes me always be in a hurry? Or why am I always impatient? Why am I always anxious? Maybe there's a practical one for you this week. Why do I dread this meeting coming up this week that I have? 
Why am I flooded with fear? Why do I avoid certain people? We feel these things, but we're never conscious of why we feel these things. Why do I have a need to immediately return every phone call, every email, every text? Or why do you avoid returning certain emails, calls, or texts? What is going on beneath the surface that keeps you from being able to fully love others and to be in true relationships with others? And so as I continue, I want to share with you three truths about our emotions. Three truths about our emotions. Number one, here's what you need to know. The unprocessed emotions in your life don't go away. Unprocessed emotions don't die. What they'll do is find a way to come out. Right? Jesus says it's not what goes inside of a man that defiles him, but what comes out. They will find a way to come out. Depression, anxiety, passive-aggressive behavior. Pete Scazzaro says it this way, our emotions and our internal self is kind of like an internal GPS that we need to pay attention to because we take those things and we submit them to God and ask God what is his will when it comes to those emotions. Unprocessed emotions don't go away. Number two, healthy community means that we need to know each other beneath the surface. So if we do this thing called church and y'all show up every Sunday and you're in life groups but you only talk to each other about the 10% and you have surface level relationships, there's no point to this. Just call it, stop showing up. Healthy community. If we're going to be in community, in communion with one another, it requires that we actually know each other where we can express and enter into each other's worlds. The extent to which you are able to experience your own emotions is the extent to which you can enter into the emotions of others. Some of y'all have a hard time when it comes to hard conversations. You know how like someone tells you how I'm going through this and you don't know how to react? Or maybe men like our our wives start crying and then you don't know what to do? Because you've never felt emotion, so you don't know how to relate to them. Healthy community means we enter into each other's lives. We know each other. So that means for Christians, we do this a lot, we need to stop diminishing the emotional side of who you are and masking it with spiritual language. So when you're going through something and someone comes to you and says, hey, I'm so sorry you're going through it, the way we diminish it as Christians oftentimes is, oh, no, it's okay. God's good. Meanwhile, you're shedding tears at home over the situation. Or someone comes to you and says, hey, I'm so sorry that you've been diagnosed with this sickness. And you say, well, no, I'm blessed and highly favored. Why? It's so hard to press into what you're feeling. Meanwhile, at home, You're depressed and you're crying out to God. Now here's what I want to say. What you're saying about God is factual, that he is good and that you are blessed and that you are uh, are favored. But you're also failing to acknowledge who you actually are, the real pain and emotions that you're feeling on the inside. So you keep people away from you and you keep God away from you because you haven't taken those emotions to God either. We mask it with spirituality. Meanwhile, God knows every single part of who we are. Number three, feelings help us discern God's voice. Feelings help us discern God's voice. The issue is not about blindly following our feelings, but acknowledging them to discern God's way and asking Jesus, how are you going to get me through this situation that I'm feeling? Being honest about your emotions doesn't undermine your trust in God. It actually deepens your trust in God. And here's what I want to say. The God of the universe who created you can handle your emotions. He can handle it. He can hear it. You can talk to him. That is the relationship that you have with him. And the sooner you begin to enter into that type of relationship with him, the sooner that you can fully love God because you reveal the deepest parts of who you are to him and surrender them to him. 